Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Tina and I'm so happy to be crafting with you with this Halloween craft along series. Um, I'll make sure that all the projects are in a separate playlist for the 2024 Halloween craft along um, so you can go back and look at them all. I do I suggest for those of you who are doing the craft along series that you do the projects in order as they appear here on the YouTube because you want to make sure all your papers work out. Um, all right, I'm really happy to be doing our slimline card, which is project four. I love a slimline card. Um, it's always been a favorite of mine. It might be the shape, but I recently took a class, um, well, did a workshop that was like a class. I learned new techniques and I fell in love with this sketch. And afterwards, it has inspired me to create design space files to do other cards. I even went in and was like, no, I need to do a scrapbook layout around this. And it's so nice when something like that happens. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll share all the measurements. So for those of you who might like to craft along um, using some supplies out of your own products, I think that's a great idea as well. All right, three and a half by eight and a half is my finished slimline base. All right, we're gonna be cutting from our 12 by 12 of, this should be your second sheet, and we're gonna cut it three and three eighths. Will be our first cut, just cut that three and three eighths off. And we're going to reserve this aside for a future project. All right. And then we're going to want to cut it eight and three eighths. There we go. Reserve that. Okay. Just basically save all your scraps until the very end. I'm hoping you guys have that by now. All right. Let me take a look. Let's take a look at the other pieces that I have in the kit now. All right, or in the project now. I have some scraps. I have a green scrap that I had, an orange scrap that I had. You can cut it off of the smallest piece that you have when we get there. This is a leftover piece of this paper here. We're gonna be using this purple side. I have two of these um, pocket cards and we're gonna cut those in half. I knew I was not using these pocket cards. This one here we're gonna put aside, and this one here we're gonna put in that same pile. I have a green piece, um, and we can put that aside for now. I wasn't sure what size I was gonna to need to use my punch, so I had that standing by, as well as um, I wanna show you a fun thing to do for the inside of your card. And I have this paper here, and we're gonna cut this at three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Okay, I'm liking it already. I wasn't sure if I was going to wanna to swap the yellow for the green in the background and do a green background. Um, I have been gravitating to using the green in the backgrounds, but I told myself I can't do them all that way, so. <laughs> I don't know what it was about about that green. I just uh, honed in on it for my backgrounds. All right. All right. Let's pull all these in. And we are going to want a two-inch punch. Or if you are a thin-cut person, two-inch thin-cut. Oh, but make sure we put that Halloween one aside. Okay, for this one here... I'm going to go as low as I can, and I'm just getting a two-inch punch. And then I'm going to do the same thing on these. I have some of that orange dotted paper that was part of your solids, and the green. Okay, this one we could get rid of, but once I start sharing with you all these ideas I, that I have coming up for these see-through circle things, you may, you might be sorry. All right, let's flip this over and a two inch from that. There we go. Okay, we'll go ahead and put that aside now. All right, let's get our pieces down. Oh, one thing you can do is I, I mentioned the marker. So let's go ahead and do that on this one. I love to trace my pace, my pieces with broad tip markers. Um, this is black. It is not inking. It's definitely different. It's more of a smoother, lighter line, but it does add a lot of dimension. Um, and 
it, it kind of will almost make your colors pop. I will say once you start doing this to layouts and projects, it does add some time, especially in my scrapbooking. There are times where I'm just sitting there and I'm um, using the marker on my pieces and I think to myself, I could probably finish a whole nother layout. But sometimes when you want that look, you know, just got to be worth it. All right, so we're going to put this in with a 16th of an inch all the way around. And you can see how that black, that thin little black line, it just adds a little something. And I just use old markers for this. Right now I pulled this one out. Um, but even the black Spectrum Noir marker, I used that one up till it, till it went. So... Uh, um, any alcohol free, free broad tip marker. And I'll try to uh, put some information in the description about that as well. There we go. And you can see that little black line, which is so great for Halloween. Although I love it at Christmas too. I know it's crazy. All right, so now we're gonna wanna organize our circles. We have two with patterns. Really, we have four with patterns. If you look at them because we have the dots. So we, we really have four pattern ones that, that I've chosen here. All right, the color that you would like to highlight the most can go at the top. I put purple up there right now. I'm just gonna, I actually really do tend to like this color. All right, this color layout. All right, whoo, stickers. We've got this little guy here, so adorable. We've got this little guy here, this little guy here. And left on my sheet is the little, these are left on my sheet. You have ghost down here, you have this one here, this one here, and this one here. Now, I will be using this coming up in a project, um, but if you, you know, swapped that out, you would still have a couple of other options to go there, and I will offer a secondary option when we get there. Okay, these little guys are going to need to go on foam tape. All right, and then here is a sticker that says Happy Halloween, and that Happy Halloween is will work very nicely on the card, but in case you wanted to make this twice. The other thing you can do is if you want it to be a little longer and come across the card, there's a Happy Halloween on this, the other side of that card that we pulled out, and I think I want that. This one will look great too, so if you, you know, want this for another thing, you have that other sticker, and I will not use that other sticker for a project. All right, we're gonna cut this in and get it just a little bit tighter, or maybe you wanna make this card again at the end. A little bit tighter, so that's a heavy eighth of an inch off the top. And then I'm cutting it underneath of the Happy Halloween. You'll have this left. I'm cutting in closer. Um, that is, uh, let's just say three eighths off of each side. There we go. All right, and since I have this purple piece right here, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at that purple and think I may end up just using that purple. If not, I kind of feel like you can't go wrong there. Whatever scrap you have, you're not gonna be able to go wrong. All the colors are here, they all look great. Let's grab some foam tape. And I'm not, I'm gonna try not to over foam tape all of these pieces. I'm gonna try to do a little better than I normally would, but I'm gonna to have to say that I'm 100% gonna to need to foam tape like the bottom where the legs are, the little arms going out. It's just, it's just a thing that I have where I don't like it if those end up being collapsed in the mail. So I'm gonna take my foam square and slice little pieces. You don't even have to peel these off and do those. And then this little arm right here, I think, needs to be done. Mm, that's just a little too tight, and I don't have, you know, I have really big fingers. As some of you have been with me for a while, we have established. There we go. All right, I feel like this is a little bit better for me. I do like a lot of foam tape. And I have a lot of foam tape, so, you know, that's a win-win. Okay, so we got some foam tape going and I wanna go ahead and take care of this. We're gonna trace that with a marker as well. 
Now this is just a marker I pull out of my stash. I do not use these for coloring. Um, the only thing I use these markers for is because they all had broad tips and this was a great way for me to get additional use out of them. I'm a huge fan of the Spectrum Noir markers. I love them. They are the best markers I've ever used and I, I love them. <laughs> all right, so I think I'm gonna do the purple on this. Small, little, maybe an eighth of an inch all the way around. I'm just gonna eyeball it. And I do this little eyeball thing a lot, even when I'm matting photos and I'm scrapbooking, I just kind of guess and then like line it up on the other side. And I say close enough is good enough. Give yourself some, you know, relax in your craft and love your craft. You do not want to be focused on everything having to be just so all the time. That's so stressful and so exhausting. You know, if you have products that you can swap out, um, use those if you, you know, and use up what you bought, if in any way possible, you know, get, get more out of your supplies. All right, I think I'm ready. Let's go ahead and start putting these down. I see so many options out of uh, this card. Um, and one thing I'm really looking forward to doing with it is, um, I have, it really inspired me to do, um, some cut through cards where we put the, um, the piece on the bottom, um, or the piece on the top, and then it has the holes cut through it. I want to go just a little bit more right here to center. My orange was just a little bit high. Our last green one. I love this sketch so much. Different sizes in the backgrounds, all the things. All right, we have a little mummy. Just gonna start laying them out and seeing. I obviously do not want my little pumpkin guy to be on the orange. He wouldn't stand out as much. Oh, isn't that adorable? With anything, you can put anything on there and then that's it. That's the winner right there. How cute is that? Okay, now he does have a little purple bag. So I'm just going to switch him off to see if I would maybe like them a little reversed here. I know I don't want them to be super straight, but I kind of like the little guy at the bottom straight. So I'm... Thinking, do I just want one of them to be straight? Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the little guy straight here at the top. I did that switch because the little bag was purple. Um, do these, this thing is so cute. All right, that's where we're going to do it. Let's go ahead and do that. You can put yours however you would like. But you can see all the options with this. And um, I like the paper, the full pieces of paper. Use your paper. I am, um, and I know I've been saying it during this series, one of the things that I am really trying to do right now is to get a paper pack. Whatever collection I decide to put together, I am trying to use it all up at one time, add nothing back into my stash, and use some things from my stash with it if I can, um, and then move on. I'm not looking to really accumulate any more supplies where I am in my life. I'm gonna put this on foam tape too. Okay. I am really loving this. And it doesn't need anything else. We don't need bling, we don't need anything for this because that background is so busy in all the right ways. Now you can go over um, the background, the, the back piece, that yellow back mat, or you can go right to it, or you can move it in. You can stick it in the middle. Play around with this card if you make more. I'm going to go straight to the edge of that, um, the yellow mat. Such a beautiful fall yellow, I thought that paper was. And even though you only see the tiniest amount of it, it's enough. This one's so cute. All right, there it is. 
I really would not add anything else to it. I don't think it needs anything. It's the perfect card. This card is too cute not to make a little bit more special. Am I right? All right, so I have an envelope here. This was included in your kit. And I had a miscut in my kit um, or when I did the one project. And I shared that with you. I had originally wanted this to be um, for the scrapbook layout that I was doing. I loved the idea of this for the background, but I had cut the wrong angle. So I said, I was just gonna put it aside. If you ended up using this in your project, then what you're looking for is the purple plaid. You should have that purple plaid sheet um, and you'll have plenty of that. But really, we just need any sheet there is. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is grab that black marker. And I am just going to highlight this here or give it a trim. And it's for more than one reason. It does fit with the projects that we're doing, but you can see when I open it, I get a really nice black line that I can use to line some stuff up. All right, when you're doing your envelopes, you wanna flip them around because they fold down this way. And I just did an envelope where I put my paper on wrong. So if you're using directional, now if you're using the purple plaid, you're good to go. But if you are going to use the houses, you may want to go ahead and swap that out, all right? All right, let's go ahead and dive in. We're gonna just add a little bit of liquid adhesive. Try to get around the edges on this because you, you don't want it to lift. All right, Let me just, I know it'll spread, but I don't know if it's going to make it that far. Okay, and for this one here, when you're lining this up, and I already lined it up uh, for the piece that I have, I really kind of want more of the top. If you lose the top of your houses, like always cover something. So for example, if you lose these top of the houses, let me just grab a piece to show you. Okay, if you were to lose the top of these houses, see, you're losing all the roof details. You're, you're losing so many things in that. But if you lose the bottom of the houses, you're keeping the bats, the ghosts, the little tops of the houses, and the decorative details. So that's why I am opting to put this piece on the way I'm putting it on. All right, I'm going to slide it right up to that black line. All right, and when we're happy, rub, rub, rub. And there we go. It's going to be so cute. I'm going to cut this off so I don't have to deal with it. It does mean I'll be making double cuts, um, but that's a lot of stuff to finagle around. Um, if, you're if you are a card maker and you're making cards, doing cards at the end you could end up doing cards forever if you have the right sketches. And so many of us do. We have those sketches that take almost no paper at all, our last chance sketches. We've been making cards forever. By adding these, one of these for each, these envelope flap, if you add these for each one, you will go through your paper a lot quicker and you will have just a little more special of a mailing. So I really like them. Maybe you have the thin cuts to do the, the letter size or the five by seven size if you're a five by seven maker. Those are nice pieces. You can even double layer them. Uh, there's so many options available to cut those in design space as well. Look at that. Now see, that is a special flap for a special Halloween card. Look at this. Okay, we're gonna do just one more thing. We have the paper to do it. Let me grab my cut. All right, for our green, we know we're going to have a Halloween message in here. But if you want to add just a little bit more oomph to this very special card, you can. So for this one here, we're going to cut it a little smaller than we did for the pieces on the front. We're going to cut it three. And I'm using the green. We would still put a white liner in it or, you know, our little Halloween message or anything by eight. So a half inch smaller. All right. And then what happens is we go from that 
three and three eighths, three and a half. Like it just progressively as it comes to the inside of our card, it just moves in. Um, now this is a dotted paper, so I don't fully suggest writing on it. Um, I think it would make your writing look a little off, but I haven't tried it yet. Right on the inside. We're not done yet. We got one other little thing that we want to add to this, okay? Okay, so just reach out. I'm trying to grab a few. And grab any scraps you have. Now, I grabbed this because, see, there's that purple one right there. Here's some of that purple plaid that I had left with the ghosts. A little bit of yellow. And we just want to cut a few of these pieces. Whatever random sizes, whatever random sizes you want to go with at three inches. Just a couple. And smaller is better. I think I'm going to do these two here. I'm sorry, thinner. Thinner is better. You don't want to put, you know, a three by three at the bottom. There we go. Up oh, three inches. Any papers you want. I'm going to throw this away. I'm going to, I'm going to be throwing this away. Um, I'm going to be throwing this away. Like whatever you have, um, as we get through the projects, you'll notice I'll start saying, okay, we can throw more and more away, but till you get to the end, there you go. These are just great ways to, to jazz up your cards, to bring in the papers, to not have them be so plain, leaving about a quarter of an inch at the bottom. For this one, I'm gonna use liquid glue. I almost dropped it as I'm holding it over my project. All right, there we go. Couple little things at the bottom end. Oh, I already lost this for my next project coming up so I can grab it. Okay, and then in here we have like little candies. There's a little bat. There's all kinds of cute things. So we're gonna grab this bat that's right down here and just put it up in the corner of the card. I think I'm gonna go to the outer corner. Isn't that cute? Now, a little white piece of paper with your ha with your Halloween, Happy Halloween message right in the center. And how cute did this turn out? This turned out super, super cute. Okay, and I hope you like this sketch. You're going to see one coming up all about dogs when I get back from my vacation. Um, that is right in the series. Let's look at our card. It really is so sweet so adorable. I also sometimes like to take a quarter of an inch piece and glue it right across the um, front of my envelopes as well. So that's another thing. But look at that. How cute is that? Guys, thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope you're having fun with this series. I hope you love this card sketch. I'm obsessed with it. Uh, I hope you're looking forward to just crafting and having a good time. It is autumn. It's my favorite time of year to craft. And if you found this video, if you liked it, if you found it useful, if maybe you were just like, hey, I want to hang out with a crazy craft lady, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out tremendously here in the YouTube community. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear from you and I'll make sure to get back with you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.